on a car where you find Jesus every time you go around a turn? Try Honda Acti! Important news, we have named the truck Ample Torque. Thanks for the suggestion, Billy. Since the last update, we bought a drive controller and an accelerator pedal, as well as other parts, which we'll get to in a moment. And just as a reminder, if you want a channel that sums up a long conversion task in one time-lapse video, that's not what we're aiming for here. This is the first time we've done anything like this, so we're documenting our learning process in the hopes that others can learn from both our successes and our mistakes. Today we're talking about energy efficiency. There are two ways to extend the range of the vehicle, buy more batteries, which costs money and makes the car heavier, or or use less power. The biggest energy hog in an electric car is heating and cooling the cabin. If we can avoid installing lots of electric resistance heaters, we can save a lot of range. There is an additional energy source we can also turn to, the human body. Insulating the cab more thoroughly would help it retain heat in the cold Pittsburgh winters. So you can see the inner workings of the door here through this little window window. Dude, it's so dirty. We've got some clearance here, as is obvious from this, like we can put about a half inch just out here. We also have the space in here, and there's another hole in here, but those are hard to get stuff into. I got this idea from the Martian. So we took this insulation, which is left over from a home improvement project, and cut out a little tiny square, put some tape on the back, and then we put it in the door to test, like, can we put this in this spot on the door and have it work? And unfortunately, this is just too thick. Although it looks like there's this kind of clearance in many places on the door, there apparently just isn't quite enough for this. So what we're gonna do instead is use spray insulation, which I was hoping to avoid using an aerosol, but sometimes it's just, that's the best product available. We can also save power by installing LED bulbs instead of incandescence. We already replaced the cabin bulb. Every watt not consumed by a light is a watt that can go to the motor instead. We're buying LED headlights, and this is adorable. This is like warning cans and capacitors. If we had like a fancy dashboard that would be like check your low beam warning light then you would need these to like trick it but uh, our car is too dumb. If you're removing the headlights be aware that cicadas live in least their heads do. Yeah, least their, he their heads do. <laughs> we took the headlight off to check the kind of bulb that goes in here and to make sure we knew how to install the new bulbs when we get them. And it looks like there was a broken piece so we fixed it with hot glue and now we're reinstalling. Converting the headlights to LEDs was easy, but doing the other position lights on the car is uh, proving challenging. It only appears to be sold mostly. They only ship in Japan. Some of these will ship to the United States, but you know, there are other issues with me being able to read this. I swear I'm reading it for the articles. This is good because I was looking for a potentiometer pedal that would be sent to the fucking logistics office and would cost 764 rhubarb. So I have one one kilo ohm resistor in the whole electronics box. I need two, and the smallest I can buy online is a pack of 100. It occurs to us that we could just return it with like one of these resistors in there. I mean, are they really gonna count 100 of them band by band? So this is the old interior of our speaker, and uh, the electronics in it are perfectly good. So we're gonna steal some of the capacitors for the amp. We've marked them. You know, this is gonna save us about 50 cents. So we're looking for a garage space, and what I'm realizing is that this experience does not resemble buying a house. Most of these pictures are like... Should I turn the flash on? <laughs> you always turn the flash on. Checking out uh, what our options are for not paying for a garage space. And this person recommends just kind of walking into an office park, parking garage, and just hoping they don't notice. Though the batteries we bought are cheap and have a low rate of discharge, I'm not convinced yet that it will take a lot of energy to move the Acti. Give me a little push. <laughs> no, really. Give you... It's already moving. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the electric conversion isn't necessary. If we just go on plant based That's, diets and all... push the car, yes. then it will already be powered sustainably. We're going uphill, man. Oh, we should stop. We're going to hit your car. <laughs> but we are going to turn this baby into an electric or die trying. Both equally likely at this rate. If I scream, that's the, that's the safety word. Okay. <laughs> but the car is called an Acti, not a think things through -y. I've got a wide stance. Like Larry Craig. That's a dated reference. Woo! The most Russian thing I've ever done. <laughs> That's a genuine risk with what we're doing right now. Yeah, no dumping, and that's also a risk right now. You can tell this is safe because it's got this nice handlebar right here. What I 
I learned from uh, when we were kids is that when you and I do something stupid, we're fine. But as soon as Jason tries it, he gets hurt. That's so yeah, I'm... don't let him do it. No. <laughs> Will the car be useful when we're done with it? We don't know yet. But the new F-150 Lightning EV has a five and a half foot bed. This Acti's bed is more than six feet. So by every available metric, the Acti is superior. <laughs> <laughs> Manual transmission lessons. Oh. <laughs> Need more nope. gas. Yep. A little too much. <laughs> That's not smooth. Nope. <laughs> it's okay, it's still better than the time Tom jammed it in second while going like fourth gear speed. <laughs> oh, see what what am I doing wrong there? <laughs> <laughs> only two cars in this whole parking lot and one of them is parked and Jason keeps almost hitting it. Down. All the way. Oh. Every time. All the way. <laughs> off the clutch, off the gas. Yeah, there you go. Now back on the gas. Ah. That might have been the best shift so far. Yeah. That was as good as anybody I've had drive this who hasn't driven manual in like 20 years or something like that. Oh, oh, that, that, one, that was pretty bad. Oh. And then parking brake. Oh, I didn't realize there's a hole in the floor all the way to the road. So there's always more to discover in the truck. There is a hole in the floor and you can just see the road right through it. So I guess if you have to go to the bathroom, <laughs> you can just set up a little tube or something. Acties were discontinued forever around the time we started this project in April of this year. In a way, we are engaged in an act of preservation. Old stuff shouldn't just be thrown away. It should be adapted, fixed, reused, and loved. If we were working with a newer car, one of the problems we would come across is that everything would be computerized and it would be deliberately built in such a way to prevent yep. us from fucking with it. When you own something, you should own it and not have to take it back to a specific repair person. The you best know. now that they have is subscription service. Oh my god, yeah. Which, with EVs, there is a something to be said for battery subscriptions. Sure. The battery in an EV, you can make that case. My neighbor said, I would own an EV if I didn't own the battery, but the company owned the battery, right. and I could take it back to them at any time. That's it, because the biggest, I mean, yes. if you buy an EV, I owned one, and I can tell you the batteries do degrade, and that's most of the cost of the vehicle. Yeah. So, one of the models for refueling EVs that I really like is called a stagecoach model where you swap out the battery mechanically, like yes. physically pull it out and then put stow it in like the station and then take one that someone else stowed yeah. and, and plug it in. I think it's great that you and I are standing around talking about how it, yeah. everyone should be able to work on their car and then Jason is actually working on the car. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to stick around for next time when we'll clean and reassemble our electric motor or throw us a couple bucks on our GoFundMe to pay for parts. The link is in the description. There are these handprints on the seat which are entertaining to me for a variety of reasons, but mostly because they're incredibly tiny.